Hey everybody, welcome again to another episode of the SOC 2 Explained series. My name is Yusuf Ali, SOC 2 Practice Leader and Manager at Risk360. Today we'll be going over CC 1.2. CC 1.2 is supporting of the control environment, which is rolled into CC 1.1 through 1.5 of the common criteria of a SOC 2 report. CC 1.2's function is really to support the top level management's perspective, approach, and really development of an internal control. The actual COAST principle itself here is the criterion, and it reads like this. The board of directors demonstrates independence from management and exercises oversight of the development and performance of internal control. It's so really independence, we're all familiar with this topic, and exercising oversight of development and performance of internal control. So really this is developing and designing ownership of the set of controls that are used to support and attest to the SOC 2 itself. The points of focus that are used to support this are, are as follows. Establishing oversight responsibilities, applies relevant expertise, operates independently, and supplements board's expertise. As you recall from the previous episode, I mentioned that not all of these points of focus are required to be met in order to achieve this criterion. I'll tell you, through, I'll tell you how I see it with certain clients. So establishing oversight responsibilities Board of Directors identifies and accepts its oversight responsibilities in relation to established requirements and expectations. So this is usually broken down into two parts. It's really designating roles and responsibilities. Um, responsibilities are rolled into each ro role, and then an organizational chart that supports the, the responsibilities in itself. Establishing requirements and expectations, the second part of this, is really more kind of on the performance level and ensuring that you have a set standard or set requirement for what you're expecting this specific role to meet. Applies relevant expertise. So this also kind of rolls into the same idea here. Board of Directors defines, maintains, and evaluates skills and expertise. So this really, what this means is really, is there a performance review program in place? That you're doing and this typically done from our best practices is on at least an annual basis so the way i look at it documentation wise for SOC 2 this is either documentate this is excuse me this is done through a ticketing system this is even done through a, a periodic annual review form that's mainly established and maintained by hr or this can be something rolled into one of your hris systems that's a little more complex but it's automated send it over to your supervisor when it's required. The third point here is operates independently. So this is kind of like an AICPA standard across the board for any of these reports. The board of directors has sufficient members who are independent from management and objective in evaluations and decision making. So from a SOC 2 point of view, you know, are your board of directors independent? Are they reviewing their requirement? Are they reviewing the organization requirements employee risks, those kinds of things. The last point here is supplements board expertise. So the board, of Ector, the board of directors supplements its expertise relevant to security availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and privacy, the trust service criteria as needed through the use of a subcommittee or consultants. Now this doesn't always apply. This just depends on really what the organization is built and how it's configured. Overall, CC 1.2 has some layover from CC 1.1. What you'll see in our SOC report is that some of the controls that support CC 1.1, as we described in the previous episode, can also be duplicated. And this is the first instance we see this of duplication, can be duplicated into CC 1.2 to support that. As you'll see, as we progress through these, this video series, you'll see that there are more and more areas where maybe CC 1.1, 1.2 controls will roll into CC 1.4, or excuse me, CC 4.1 or CC 5. So, Control environment really is a foundation of the rest of the SOC report. A lot of people like to think that information security uh, or the SOC report is only pertaining to information security. But as you'll see, as we continue through the CC 1.1 through 1.5, which is the control environment, this really focuses on a, a bigger organizational picture. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be on the lookout for the next one, CC 1.3. If you have any other questions or have any other insight for us, check us out at risk360.com. Look forward to talking to you all soon. See ya.